Hello, you multi uh, mystic Mesoic mammals, and thank you to the bookkeeper Will for that malt mention. So, all you whiskey fans and people interested in good quality spirits, welcome to my channel. I'm Ralphie, and this is the channel which kind of takes more of a deep dive into appreciating and getting the most out of the investment that we make in good quality spirits. We are, we are not basically watering them all down with flavoured mixers and heaping ice in so as we, we can basically spend an awful lot of money getting pished in public places. That's not what this channel is about so it is extremely rare um, that you'll see me talking about cocktails or reviewing cocktails or um, talking about things relating to bars. I mean, these channels get plenty of views and hey, good luck to them. But here we're focusing and specifically in Ralphie Review 977 Extras, I'm going to be focusing on navigating a whiskey. It could be navigating a bourbon, a cognac, a rum, a mezcal, any good quality spirit from anywhere in the world. Essentially what you have is through the process of distillation a refinement and concentration and a selective acquiring of flavours, sensations and forms. The flavours in the liquor can be lemon, toffee, coffee, um, brown sugar, caramel, cola. The sensations are sweet, sour, salt, savoury and bitter and the form is the actual intensity of the delivery, the duration of the arrival, the duration and complexity of the development on the palate and the duration and substance of the finish at the end of the experience. And you can only get that by really slowing things down. And we only bother with this if we're prepared to do our homework, do our groundwork, do our detective work to find out which spirits best suit what we're looking for. So we're no longer just drinking to get drunk. That's, that's frankly irrelevant. Um, and it's certainly it's a, a good point in our favour. We're drinking for quality. We're consuming alcohol purely for quality. And therefore, we may not be sober at the end of it, but we're certainly not talking all the rubbish and all the nonsense that you find people out in bars on a Saturday night that if you happen to be in these bars and you're sober, your patience quickly wears thin. Hey, it's just real life. It's just, it is the norm of the human condition and I'm not judging it, I'm observing it. So, what we'll find is, whether it be my water glass, that, or this tumbler, right, you know, when we are navigating a whiskey, this is the last thing we want unless we're looking for something very superficial and forgettable. A tumbler such as this, which is a standard bar device used for serving whiskey, is simply a shot glass on a bigger scale to make room for ice and other mixers, which could be normally traditionally soda, but more recently it can be anything from iron brew, coca-cola, ginger beer, ginger ale, tonic water, elderflower cordial. Hey, we're spoiled for choice these days. So let's put this away and focus on the two glasses really that we'd use. These are the practical glasses. I mean, you get the posh ones, which are expensive and very fragile. And they give you a marginal additional experience in the nose because of their shape. That, and you'll find that generally they're a very con concave, um, like a brandy balloon, quite a large bowl, but a very small aperture because it focuses and concentrates the odours coming off the liquor in the glass. But for practicalities, a, a standard Capita or a Glencairn 
are ideal. Now I've already got whiskey in the Glen Cairn. Glen Scotia. Double cask. Integrity whiskey. Very easy. To be looking out for if you're into smell and taste and you want some value for money for the premium of the the cash that you're paying in order to invest in that experience it, it although it's a non-age statement whiskey it's relatively transparent about how it's been bottled so it tells you that it would first fill bourbon casks to start with which tells us that we can expect some vanilla notes and some mild American oak notes and a certain sweetness in the liquor. And then it tells you it's finished in Demerara rum casks, which suggests you're going to have something more rum-like, so brown sugar, muscovado, a little bit perhaps of a few more esters in the, in, in the experience. And then importantly in the back, non-chill filtered natural colour. So a very clear indication that from 46% up to cask strength. This is where the flavour zone is, the real flavour zone is. But you do have to watch because some spirits, particularly younger spirits, when they're bottled at a particularly high strength of 60% plus, they can actually have too much alcohol in them that it actually suppresses the delivery of the flavour. So in fact, when you've got a younger whiskey in particular of really high strength it actually pays to automatically just add some water even before you start smelling and tasting the whiskey of course just taste it neat before you go purely as a point of reference so we have two glasses which basically serve the same purpose they are small easy to portion control you're not mixing you're not adding ice unless you're in a particularly hot country and you're controlling the situation carefully and you have concave right convex sorry convex sides which allow the ar arising aromas of flavor to billow out the way and then come in just like the liquor going up towards the neck of a still in a pot still it's exactly the same thing and these glasses help you focus on what's being delivered by the nose and the nose is where we start to really navigate the whiskey now this particular bottle is very easy to navigate it's Glenfiddich 12 year old bottled at 40 percent chill filtered and perhaps a wee drop of colorings added but actually very little, mercifully little. This is a brand which is confident enough in its own skin that it doesn't feel the need to tart up its product with artificial E150 colourant to make up for the fact that it never got natural colour out the cask because it didn't get a lot of flavour out the cask either. That happens. So here we have uh, a stalwart bar brand that if you're just looking for a, a chuggable right whiskey that's not going to be stretching your, your, your sensory experiences too far this is what you buy Glenn for a 12 year old you, ca you can't go wrong with it and I really like this brand because it's transparent and honest about itself so I've poured some and when you nose it because it's a simple whiskey you get a nice barley, soft barley sugar, generalised nose, fairly straightforward, not particularly ambitious. And you're tasting it neat. It's ready to go. It's its sipping strength. A little bit tangy, small tangy, nice little kind of soft grain sour. And another thing to Glenfiddich's credit is the consistency of their bottlings. They really are consistent in the calibre of the, what they bottle. And I commend them for it. If only, if only, but they don't do it, but they should. Every now and again, just bring out a small batch for the actual whiskey sippers of some young Glenfiddich because it's really, really, really good. But they don't do it. 
because as customers, frankly, we're not important to them. Hey, it's just, it's just the fact of it. Even though whiskey sippers are a significantly growing and valuable customer base to the whiskey industry. Let me just state for the record that in my opinion, the whiskey industry generally continues to ignore the nuisance customers because they much prefer the obedient, passive consumers who will just go with the label and whatever they experience, yeah, that's what you expect from whiskey, and they'll just carry on. And if they didn't particularly like it, they won't buy any more whiskey again. So it's a lost sale for the future. But hey, that's real life. Now we move to the Glencairn. A much more complex whiskey here. It's not just that Glen Scotia has a stronger signature. It's the fact that the way this whiskey's been prepared, 46% now, not 40, unchill filtered, so no chill filtration, natural colour, you're getting a much more honest, flavour focused delivery of the product in the bottle. And in this case it was finished in rum casks and for the inexperienced whisky drinker they're going to be disappointed because unfortunately these rum casks haven't worked very well. They haven't delivered anything in particular to the event and in fact you really have to navigate this whisky knowing that your assets apart from the style of glass you use apart from adding a small drop of water and you don't add it all at once you add it incrementally over time and you make use of time to help you navigate to narrow in your perception and your focus onto what is the essential quality of this whiskey of any whiskey is a bad whiskey really bad well you've got to navigate it to find out because it could be just a bad finish and in fact it's hiding a good whiskey and in this case it's absolutely true this is a really it's a gentle mild soft whiskey it's not a bold assertive whiskey and i think in the desire to make a bold assertive single malt they, they've got this rum these rum casks which have been as much use as a fart in a storm and it's just they've just been ineffective but whereas the the person who doesn't know how to navigate a whiskey or is inexperienced will just say oh i don't like that Ugh, and then just dismiss it after 10 minutes the navigator the malt navigator knows no we need to give this more time because we know this is a good signature we also know because part of navigating a whisky is your background knowledge in a distillery. And what I can tell you about Glen Scotia is a while back they, they turned all their casks on their end and started to palletise them, which in my opinion is a perpetual, continual mistake in the storage of whisky. And I'll tell you a simple reason why. Because when you have, where's a little cask? I've got a little cask. I'm sure I've got a little cask somewhere. Here it is. Traditionally, casks were stored like that, right? That's the wee bung there, right? And the bung would be at the top. And then, for the convenience of using forklift trucks, which didn't used to exist, they turned casks in their end and put them in pallets and then bound them together so as they could more conveniently move with less labour volumes of casks in a warehouse using a forklift truck. The problem is, the first problem is, see the bung, the bung is now at the side and it's made of popular, poplar and poplar wood unlike the rest of the cask which was made of oak is porous from back to the front of the cask so it's literally acting like a wood wick and without any leaks occurring the contents of that cask start to leak out through and wick out through 
the popular bun. The amount of losses that distillers get from palletage cask exceed horizontal stored casks by a factor of five to one. And I have that from an industry insider, five to one. So the economies of palleting for the convenience of warehousing are lost because of the cost of your additional losses. This is why when you go into a palletage warehouse, when you're visiting a distillery, it always smells nice. That's because of all the whiskey in the air leaking out the casks. And not only that, but the barrel head, a very important part of the wood contact, which the cask would get if it was stored in its side, is completely lost because that when it's stored upright, it's in contact with thin air beneath it. So you're simply not getting the same wood connectivity. You, you get literally 15% less wood connectivity when you palletize a cask. Frankly, I'm just telling you, malt mates, I don't know why they do it. It is a serious false investment. It's a false economy. But Glen Scotia do this. And this is because I can navigate now this whiskey, because I've got background information on the distillery, now I know, because of their palletage, they're having restrained maturations. They're having reserved maturations, which makes them feel the need to do these double caskings and, you know, put the contents into new casks for, what, eight months, four months, two months, two weeks, Goodness knows, at least they're giving us some information. Some, many distilleries tell us nothing. Tell us nothing. All this needed was a bit more time. That's all it needed. A bit more time. Because see these ex-bourbon casks, they were decent. Now, I can navigate, I'm navigating this now. And I've added water to this and I've let it sit for a long time. Great big arrival. Fresh, fruity, zesty, complex citrus, delicious. Expanded arrival into the development because we're navigating this, you see. <clears throat> you see, when they taste the whiskey, it's in three parts. Arrival, development, and then finish. And what we have here is a peculiar characteristic where the, the arrival and the development are inseparable. They are seamless. So with this whiskey, the Glen Scotia, just as a working example, the transition from arrival to development is literally one, one process. There's no, no separation between them. As a result of which, the finish, and you usually find this, the finish is a little bit restrained. This is a sign that you're tasting a young whiskey which needed a couple of more years in the cask. <laughs> and see that lack of maturation? You can't just settle it with a quick fix by hiking it into another cask, particularly if that cask's been fairly mediocre in its influence. And these rum casks were. I tell you, if it had been Madeira casks, whole different ball game. Again, we're navigating. When you're navigating the experience of a whiskey, we use our imagination. Now, this is an important part of navigating. We use our imagination to remember our points of reference we've built up over the years, built up both of the years from experience. Experience of tasting and smelling different whiskies. It's amazing, by the way, how our brain, because it's interacting with our sense of smell and our sense of taste, which are chemoreceptors, which are processed by the whole brain, not the rational or the irrational, not the subliminal, not the overt, not the left side or the right side. The whole brain analyzes it and gives us incredibly accurate records in our memory banks. In fact, it's a really good, see smelling and tasting whiskey, it's as good as doing a crossword puzzle to exercise your mind, to use your mind. 
It's as good as doing Sudoku. Because see the people that are just necking it, glug. They're getting nothing. It's like going to an art gallery and just having a brief glance at a painting and saying, oh, I like that, and then moving on. See, when you're navigating whiskey, it's like navigating music, like navigating art. The more you engage, the more you connect, the more you use your experience, the more you, in a disciplined fashion, the more you map out your experience to yourself, the more you get out of it. And there's nothing makes me laugh more at whiskey festivals when I see experts who will swish around the whisker like this. Oh yes, it's this and this and this and this. And all done and dusted in five minutes. It even happens in competitions. It's no use. It's no use. I hope you found this interesting. The theme of this extras malt mix has been navigating. And just like seafarers navigate using a compass and the stars, just as hill walkers navigate using a map and a compass, we too navigate using our internal compass of experience and the map of knowledge that we learn over the years to steer our way accurately through this bewildering landscape of smell and tastes, not knowing where they will take us, but knowing for sure where we've already been and what we've already discovered. And do you know what? It's a wonderful, wonderful journey. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Clivey Clicker now, so it's time to go, but before I do, um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Uh, I give you regular updates every single week. In fact, I've been doing it every single week. In fact, twice a week for some, some years. For the last 14 years. And that's been an awful lot of whiskey along the way. A huge amount of whiskey. Um, in fact, I'll go even further. I've tasted more variety of whiskey than your average industry professional. And shocker. The way things are going... You are too.